We are in College Station, Texas on a busy day for SEC basketball. It appears every team will get to play some hoops this afternoon. Two of those teams right here, Missouri Tigers 7-2, Texas A&M 7-4. Dave Neal alongside former Missouri All-American guard John Sunvolt. So glad you could join us as this Missouri team is back on the court. Sonny, it has been 11 days, but their last game on the road at Mississippi State did not go well, very well for them. They lost a 14-point lead in the second half. So between those two items, what do you make of Missouri moving forward? Well, players want to get back on the court as quickly as possible after that kind of debacle at Mississippi State. Consul Martin told us yesterday, Dave, that, you know what, a break is good. Get away from the game just a little bit. They got individual workouts. Finally got to practice on Wednesday after the COVID issue. And he thinks his team's ready to go. They've won three of four games on the road this season. Well, if they're going to continue to be in a top 20 team, they're going to need Xavier Pinson to continue to play the way he has been playing. He's been a real catalyst for them. Yeah, Xavier Pinson's probably playing maybe the point guard position as well as anybody in the league. He's been double figures 15 of his last 17 ball games going back to last season. Can shoot it from outside, but the strength of his game is his quickness on the defensive end and getting to the basket in half-court sets. He averages over nine free throw attempts a game in SEC play. I know Buzz Williams talked about that with his team to try to get him contained so that he doesn't get loose. Now, Texas A&M, Sonny, a team that's coming off a 14-point second-half rally against Mississippi State. Bulldogs did it to Missouri 11 days ago, and then A&M does it to the Bulldogs in their last meeting on Wednesday night. So we'll see if they can ride some of that momentum, a low-scoring game in that big victory, a 56-54 win over Mississippi State. So Missouri and Texas A&M, as um, Buzz Williams told us, this could turn into a tractor pull <laughs> type of day. <laughs> Well, AM likes to keep this game in the high 50s. Missouri likes to play up-tempo, but again, when you get to conference play, it gets bogged down a bit. You know, Buzz Williams, his comment after the AM game, the win at Mississippi State, is he said, we hope the second half will be the acceptance. And what he meant by that is they're a team that turns the ball over too many times. They don't get enough shot attempts. They, put, they play a possession-to-possession possession game. They're terrific on the defensive end. Let's see if Missouri, which has struggled shooting the basketball outside, opens it up a little bit. But they're on the road. We'll see. 40th meeting between these two clubs is underway. A&M leads the series 21-18. Gord's first shot at three-pointer on the way, and it is funny. Take a look at our Farm Ridge starting lineups for Missouri. Same group that they have gone with. Pinson, the Smith boys, Drew and Mark, Kobe Brown, and Jeremiah Tillman, who's having a great campaign. He'll need to keep it up offensively as well, averaging 11 points a contest. Well, a big quick start for AM and a quick shot for Gordon to knock in his first three. Solid player. They don't take quick shots offensively, but what they want to do, they got the first one, and then defensively, they suffocate you. A forced bad shot for Missouri early. That's Mark Smith with the air ball, and we'll take a look at Texas AM starting lineup brought to you by Farm Rich, Hassan Diar, Andre Gordon, Hayden Hefner, Emmanuel Miller, and Jonathan Aku in the starting lineup. That is uh, a lot of young players on the board for the Aggies. Yeah, the Aggies, they have had eight different starting lineups now in their 12th ball game. Now this one is a couple times they've used it. Missouri has started the same five every time out. There's a difference. This Missouri team returned 88% of their scoring from a year ago, a veteran team for Conzo Martin. He's comfortable with his squad, he likes them. They've had big wins on the road this season. They've had big wins at home when they beat Illinois. A, a top 20 ranked team, and they've been there for five weeks. Gordon has that one blocked from behind. Good defensive effort by Drew Smith, forcing the shot clock violation. So turnover's an issue for both teams when they're not playing well. That's generally a, a, an area you could point to. Yeah, good matchup here. Drew Smith, one of the top defenders in the SEC. He's got great hands. The only thing he's done this season versus last that he's had a few reaching calls. So he's taken himself out of games by getting into foul trouble. Pressure from the Aggies, disrupting the flow for the Tigers, and back the other way comes Texas A&M. Diara kicks it to Gordon. Andre, nowhere to go, pinching on him, then finds Emmanuel Miller, team's leading scorer, averaging over 16 a game. Another good possession by A&M. I thought Gordon kind of passed up an open look when he had it. But he made even a better play, got a wide open layup. Their defense, again, can Missouri solve the fact of how A&M wants to force you to the middle, force you to the paint? Their aggressive garden, man-on-man, -man, don't allow easy shots. 
That looked pretty easy off the right hand of Drew Smith, knocking that one home. A coup. Spins, awkward shot. Rebound to Mark Smith. Tillman, double team, splits it. Boy, nice effort from Jeremiah Tillman. Well, that's his maturity. He has been terrific the last two ball games at scoring the basketball, being patient. Has not gotten into foul trouble, and when you're double teamed as a big man, normally you're going to kick it out. He stepped through, laid it in. Increased his point production by three a game. Started 82 games in his career now for the Missouri Tigers. And a turnover by the Aggies will give it right back to Missouri. Tied at 5, 17.03 to go, opening half. Take a look early. How You'll see how AM wants to, to cover up a guy like Tillman on the block. As he's patient and the double team comes, when he looks, uh, the defenders can't let him step through. That's an easy bucket, but good patience by Tillman on the offensive end. Pinson splits the defenders at the top of the key. Throws it off an Aggie defender, and Missouri will have it with 21 on the shot clock. Boy, Xavier Pinson's been fun to watch this year. He's having a really good junior season. He's 11th in the conference in scoring, 8th in assist, and has really matured as a player. You just watch him play, and it's just a different guy. Yeah, he's got great speed. Uh, he controls tempo for this Tiger team. Uh, a decent outside shooter, but it's his speed and his passing ability that allows the ball to move better when Missouri's playing well on the offensive end. Rebound to a coup, averaging almost three of those per game. Aggies averaging just 65 points a game. That's 14th in the conference. In and out for Diara. Drew Smith. Hits an open. Ball fake. Back to Drew Smith. Long rebound to Pinson. Free throw line jumper. Got it. Dave, two coaches in this game that uh, are put all the pride on the, the defensive end. And they do not love get, like giving up second opportunities. And AM did that time on the long miss, long rebound by Drew Smith. JJ Chandler, high arching three is good. JJ just 23% from behind the arc. Nine of 38 coming into this one. Well, we've seen JJ now in his senior season. He's he has the ability to put up points in a hurry. He shot well and he played well in the Mississippi State win. He had 12 points, hit a couple threes in that second half, which really ignited this Aggie team to a win on the road. Bad pass. Back the other way is Mark Smith. He can't handle it, but there's Drew Smith. A couple of pump fakes back to Pinson. What does Pinson need to shoot that? No, I think it's a good decision. Get it set up. He's, he makes can make those, but I think as a point guard, you want to get your guys involved early. But what you don't want to have is a turnover. Mark Smith basically had almost two turnovers in that one possession. Got lucky that he his teammate Drew Smith picked up the first one. Foul on Mark Smith on the reach. 14.40 to go in the first half. One point A&M lead. Back to College Station after this. SEC Network Men's Basketball is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. What a gorgeous day in Bryan College Station for some SEC basketball. And for Texas A&M, they start two freshmen and three sophomores. But these guys could easily be in the starting lineup. They have been in the starting lineup. But Kirk coming off the bench right now. And Sonny, if A&M is going to make a jump, right, to get in the top half of this league, like they did last year, winning 10 conference games, these guys have got to start to play a little bit better. Yeah, and the reason is because these the, 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 the trio here can produce on the offensive end. Now, the mistakes that are made either defensively or with turnovers is why you have a seat next to a coach like Buzz Williams. He is, and he'll say it, we're an intangible program. I am an intangible coach. 
Well, the intangible, you can't turn it over. You've got to play good deep. But like you said, Dave, for them to jump up a little bit and be as good as they can be, Quentin Jackson is explosive and can score. We know Savion Flagg's not necessarily an exclo- uh, explosive score, but he averaged 13 points a game as his sophomore. And we know that J.J. Chandler may be streaky, but it's a good streaky when he's shooting it well. And when these three guys are on the floor, they're different offensively, and they put a lot more pressure on any defensive team. Savion Flagg coming on now, his first appearance, coming off two points in 26 minutes versus Mississippi State, just one of six from the field. You and I have seen him play at a really high level. It just consistently hasn't been there. Uh, you know, if, if whatever that is that doesn't allow him consistency ever shows up, he can be a game changer. Yeah, he really can be. He's only had two games this season when double figures. The first one against Tarleton, or the second game of the year, Tarleton. But he had four threes against Tennessee, and you always kind of think, okay, maybe that gets a score going, but he doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be a shooter. Good defense. Yeah, Emmanuel Miller with the charge. Go back the other way. The team's leading score. Here's a guy, probably one of the most unsung players in this conference this year, Emmanuel Miller, averaging over 16 points a game, almost eight rebounds. Not many people really talk about him uh, well, across, across this conference. And his jump is 10 points per game, uh, advantage from a year ago. As a freshman, he averaged six points. Now he's at 16. Uh, He's the guy that really has to be solid game in and game out on the offensive end. We know the Aggies will play good defense. Can they score? Uh, can Can they allow only one shot? Can they get a rebound? Can they not turn over on the other end? Can they get more shots up? That's how they'll win games. Pickett checks in. Brown checks in. Mitchell Smith also on the floor now for Missouri. Swing it around the perimeter. Shot clock at two, and Pickett's shot no good. Offensive rebound and a putback no good. That one stripped away from Torrance Watson, who's getting some early action. Almost a uh, whole five substitution. It did. Council Martin's got a whole new group in. Uh, again, an aggressive group defensively. They can attack. Pickett's a downhill guy. They get it off the rim and run. Uh, A&M doesn't allow you a lot of easy buckets. They don't allow you to run out. They get back defensively. So Missouri's going to have to be better in a half-court set, especially with his second team they've got in now. Gordon, that won't go. Big offensive rebound from Kevin Marfo, the graduate transfer. He'll kick it out to the corner. Davion Flagg misses that three. Nice bounce pass to Mitchell Smith. Give the assist to Javon Pickett. Yeah, good move by Pickett. Again, he plays downhill to the rim, and when he headed that way, defense knows that. Good cut by Mitchell Smith. Easy, too. Nice pass. Gordon bumped. He'll head to the free throw line. Drew Bugs will pick up that foul. Conzo Martin with this five in there. He's looking for energy on both ends of the floor. Guys that can attack the rim, guys that can get rebounds. Mitchell Smith in his senior season. Good all-round player. Uh, Conzo Martin loves having him on the team. He can guard almost one through five defensively. He's long. Ability to shoot it outside. Has not made many threes in his career. Tillman with the block shot. Here's Bugs back the other way. Drew Bugs, a transfer from Hawaii. Makes his home in Long Beach, California. High arching three from Watson, no good. Loose ball inside Tillman. Traveling violation against Jeremiah. Just lost his balance. Yeah, I think Consul Martin's ha- he's okay with that. You don't want to travel, but he's got to be happy with the aggressiveness on the offensive boards by this Missouri team. AM not getting bodies on the bigs from Missouri. They're getting offensive rebounds. And if you do that, you'll get more attempts. Missouri only shooting 4 of 11 from the field. AM 3 of 9 from the field. And the first 11 possessions for AM, three turnovers and three made field goals. Remember, they made their first shot about six seconds into this game, a three pointer from the top of the key from Andre Gordon. Flag ball fake on Mitchell Smith in traffic and count the shot. Savion Flag will head to the free throw line. Flag has the ability to kind of play at his pace. He doesn't get in a hurry. Uh, he's not the alpha dog that maybe some of us would like him to be, but that's just not his personality. 
But he is capable. He can shoot it well. He's got a strong physical body. He can take contact, finish plays. Tapped around and off the le Oh, they're going to say it's going to belong to Missouri. It looked like it went off the leg of Drew Smith. I think you have good eyes there, Dave. This loose ball would appear to be yeah, off the left knee of Drew Smith. And I'm sure Drew looked up, saw the official pointing his way, and said good call. Well, Don Daly, who that's not his call. It was on the other side of the court, but he's the one who gets to uh, hear from Buzz Williams, and the turnover gives it right back to Texas A&M. Timeout on the floor. Buzz Williams still trying to figure it out. His team's up one. Hey guys, Alyssa Lang here for a quick studio update. We'll check in with Georgia Ole Miss. How about for the dogs here to Monty Kamara with the bucket and one to help Georgia pull ahead later a drive and a lay in. Georgia leads 43 34 over the Rebels. All right, thank you, Alyssa. Georgia's one of those teams you kind of scratch your head, right? I mean, you expect more. They're giving up over 90 points a game in conference play. I mean, that's. That's hard to do, right? Um, but they do, uh, you know, they do possess some offensive fireworks along the way, something these two clubs trying to find right now. Uh, I'll go back and say that the, the comment that we got from Buzz Williams yesterday in our, in our Zoom call with him was, guys, you're going to be watching a tractor pull tomorrow. And um, <laughs> he's not far off here at 10-9, <laughs> just under 12 minutes to play first half. Dave, you get in these type of games, It's uh, you hate to say possession by possession this early in the ballgame because there's a lot of time left. But this is uh, similar uh, to NCAA kind of games, right? I everything slows down. Uh, every possession seems to be more important even early in the first half than other games that are up and down the court where you're allowed to make a few mistakes. When you're in a game like this one, Missouri already has four turnovers. A&M already has three turnovers. Uh, Missouri, the advantage for them, they've got three offensive rebounds. So it, it does become a tractor pull, a, a physical combative war that you just, each possession is tough to score because both teams are very good defensively. Quentin Jackson misfires and a tie up on that rebound. Kobe Brown and Kevin Marfo. Scrapping for it, it'll belong to Missouri. You mentioned Missouri's defense, Sonny, and, and you think about what happened to them. They beat Arkansas 81-68 in Fayetteville. They held Arkansas to their worst shooting night in Bud Walton Arena history. Then they started the first half against Mississippi State on the road and were dynamite. Everything clicked, maybe as best that they have played all year in terms of a half of basketball, and then it all went away. And Mississippi State shot great in the second half, over 50%. But still, you just don't go into Bud Walton and do that if you don't know what you're doing defensively. Well, they've always been solid defensively, and there are times you're going to run into uh, two guys like Stuart Molinar at Mississippi State that actually not only made almost every shot they took the second half, but they were tough shots, mid-range jumper, hand in the face. You know, we talked to Conzo Martin yesterday, and he said, you know, I watched the film, and yeah, Missouri didn't do some good some things offensively right, but defensively, I, there are times you, you tip your hat and, and and say to the other guy, hey, well done, and we know what those two guys in Mississippi State should do, and they've been doing it all season. Aggies up by three, 12-9, 10-50 to go, first half. Dave Neal, John Sunvold, glad you could join us from Bryan College Station. No, you and here's, College Station. No, and, and here's, what you, here's what you know about a and there is no rhythm or no flow to Missouri offensively. And, and some will watch and say, well, why can't Missouri get it going? Uh, A&M doesn't allow you to. They guard you so well, they get back defensively. All five white shirts get back, and they get set, and they don't allow you to get in the flow. The only way it can happen is if you can get rebounds off the rim, can push it. But, but as an opponent, you think, well, we don't want to take quick early shots because that feeds into what A&M wants also. Good pass. The old pick and roll almost got it to go down, but Tillman 
Speaking of going down, went down like a pine tree in the forest and hit that stanchion. He'll head to the free throw line as he was bumped on his way up. But, boy, that high pick and roll between those two, when it works, it is pretty. Yeah, they and, and again, Pinson knows how to turn the corner. They were spectacular in the Arkansas game, and, and Tillman had a lot of dunks. He had 25 points and 11 rebounds. And, and Pinson's got that knack of knowing where Tillman will roll to, where he should get the basket, basketball, and how close he needs to be to the rim. Our full day of men's basketball right here on the SEC Network is highlighted by this good one at 6 o'clock Eastern. Vanderbilt looks for the upset against Victor Bailey Jr., John Fulkerson, and the rest of the Tennessee Vols as they come in ranked 10th in the country. Vols 9-1. Right now, Joe Lenardi has him as a number two seed in his latest predictions. I know it's early, but, hey, we're getting emails every day, right? <laughs> It's, it's part of uh, we, we talk about the, the tournament when we start the season. Uh, Vescovia, ten, when Tennessee played A&M, uh, A&M, what they do well is they contest shooters. They did not contest Vescovia from Tennessee, and he made five triples on him, and it was outstanding. But we've seen Tennessee play. They've got a team that can score. Uh, they are a great defensive squad. When they're right, I think they're one of the best in the country. Here's Emmanuel Miller. That's a three. Andre Gordon with his second three-pointer of the afternoon. Gordon is that player now in his sophomore season. You can almost tell game by game, month by month, uh, his confidence level at running his team, taking the shots he should take, uh, distributing the basketball, but it takes a long time. When you're trying to run a squad for a team, he played a lot as a freshman, and now he's a starter as a sophomore. Take it. Little floater on the way. will roll in for Drew Bucks. His first basket. He just doubled his average. Came in just one point per game. Really struggled from the floor. Just 2 of 17, 11 percent. 0 for 8 from behind the arc for Bucks. But he's an assist guy. They're not looking for a bunch of points from him. Yeah, and they like his leadership to spill uh, minutes at the at the point guard position. Understands the game. Uh, wants to be a coach when it's done. And the coaching staff from Missouri said he's going to be a good one. Nice pass, Tillman. Yeah, Drew Smith with a pass right on the money. Tillman is a big that can run rim to rim. 6'10", active, uh, a runner. And, and that's an easy way for him at times to get buckets, outrun the bigs for the other squad. Gordon just lost it out of bounds. It'll give it right back to Missouri. We talked about how tough it is to score against AM. You don't get many early looks, but that time the Tigers sprinted out of there. Tillman again, right down the center of the court, and it was Drew Smith with his eyes up that found uh, his teammate wide open. Missouri averaging 72 points a game, 10th in the conference. Giving up about 68 points per game. That's 6th among SEC clubs. Well, that's a tough shot from Drew Smith. I think they're trying to determine if the shot clock should have reset or not. And they're going to determine the ball never hit the iron, so they'll keep it at 18 seconds. So Hefner to the bench. Zach Walker getting some early action here in the first half, wearing number 21 for Texas A&M. Had his hands on the basketball, but it popped right into Andre Gordon's hands. Yeah, Gordon's hit two threes. Let's see if he can find another one, although he's out running the squad. Can't leave flag wide open. He's a good shooter. Savion flag. Knocks on that three. And pick an offensive foul. Timeout on the floor, three-point lead by the Aggies. You know, the, 
uh, Savion Flag, the numbers may not show it. The numbers are down this season. But if you give this confidence to the senior, he's going to knock in shots. A&M up three early. Anytime McGregor gets in the ring, it's time to stop what you're doing and watch. You <laughs> in the sports world have that kind of power. John Sunvold had it back in the day, but as he's aged, it's kind of dissipated somewhat. You think my power's left me? My left hook's not, <laughs> yeah. not, not quite as strong? That's what you're saying? <laughs> you lost a step. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair to say. I'll agree with you. 18-15, our tally here, Texas A&M out in front, 7.34 to go in the first half. You look at the five hitting the floor for Missouri with Pickett, Bugs, Tillman, Smith, and Smith trail by three. 15 points on the board for Missouri. How did the Tigers get some offense? They haven't had any real good clean, maybe a couple nice passes inside for some layups, but it hadn't been easy for them offensively. Well, it's not easy against a &M, no matter what you do. The, the thing you can always – try to do against a team like AM that does such a good job of helping on the penetration is if you go hard knowing they're going to help and pitch it your guys have to be ready to catch and shoot you're going to find open looks and some teams have but again you've got to make hard moves off the dribble see if you can get the defense to help out because you know they will and then guys have to be ready to knock in open shots bugs with an errant pass texas a&m back the other way Seventh turnover by Missouri in this first half. Conzo's not been real happy about the turnover. He had 21 in that win against Arkansas, 15 against Mississippi State. Matter of fact, he said at one point that there have been so many turnovers around his team that he's going to name one of his grandkids turnover. <laughs> well, he, you know, it was funny because we're, you know, we have these Zoom conversations, and he was on there yesterday, and he rolled his eyes about a couple of the passes some of the guys make and have made, and, you know, Again, as a coach, you live with it. Uh, you get frustrated. And this Missouri team can be, and they've proven already with the wins they've had this season, the top 20 team, uh, they can't turn it over as many times as they have been because other teams will take advantage, and then that just takes away the ability what you can do offensively. Boy, nice stop and pop from J.J. Chandler, averaging seven points a game. The South Paul out of Katy, Texas. That's why you like seniors that have been around. Uh, Chandler, we talked about his game against Mississippi State. He had 12 points, four times in double figures this season. Capable of going on some mini runs. J.J.'s got a great-looking shot. Good mid-range game also. And there is J.J. on that foul, reaching around Mitchell Smith. One thing they don't like is that he has more turnovers and assists, but this is what he can do. He's capable as a left-hander. He loves to go left, but he likes to come back right for the jump shot, which frees up his left shoulder. He's had some big games in an Aggie uniform. He's terrific from the free throw line, 91%. So if he can get it going, maybe he can draw contact, get to the free throw line. How quickly the A&M double team came, and Tillman's pass was errant, so there was really no shot for Mark Smith to hack. And Drew Smith misfires. Boy, a five-point lead in a game like this, almost like it's a ten-point lead, right? Yeah, it really is. It's tough to score. Manuel Miller just bulldozes his way into the lane, right through the chest of Mitchell Smith. Yeah, Smith looking at the official as though he might have got a charge, but Miller's good enough with the basketball, understands how to get it on the rim, soft touch, allowed the bucket. Missouri now needs to answer. Seven zero run by the Aggies, and they try to stretch it here. Little run out, a rare run out. Flag. Step back three, no good. Long rebound right to Emmanuel Miller. And that's a tough shot by Flag. Bad pass, good steal by Smith. Boy, a little sloppy on that possession. And back the other way, J.J. Chandler. 
You know, it's interesting that time by Chandler, Dave. He had numbers, but A&M's not used to going back and forth and up and down. And I know they wanted him to pull it back out. And, and But when you have numbers, you maybe ought to take a look. He pulled it out awfully quickly. And Flag, who took a bad shot last time, this time probably not as bad a shot, but he's missed, missed them both. Savion now one of four from behind the arc. Here's Tillman as the defender falls down and just muscles his way to the basket. And that stops that Texas A&M run. Yeah, credit Mizzou for being patient enough. When Chandler was guarding Tillman, the guys on that side said, hey, there's a mismatch. And Chandler fell down. They found it. Found Tillman for an easy two. Gordon pull up. Well, he looks good this afternoon. He looks confident. Doesn't score a lot of points, but you can see his ability to make shots. Here's Tillman, double teamed, kicks it back out. Pinson for three, hammers it home. Pinson's first three of the game is good. He's got five. Inside, outside. Teams are going to double team. you got to make them pay when you kick it out. Pinson, no hesitation. Just 25% from behind the arc for Pinson this year. Now 12 out of 45. Timeout on the floor. Missouri down four. Pinson trying to get his club back in it. Coming up on the SEC Halftime Report, we're going to do a little preview of Kentucky-Auburn talk if Alabama can stay unbeaten in conference play. Pat, what have you seen from the first half, though? Beat it to the big fella, Jeremiah Tillman. <laughs> no doubt about it. And for a and keep getting your points off your turnovers. It's working. We'll see you all in a few minutes. Thank you, Alyssa. Good to see Pat. Damian alongside. Tillman has eight. Andre Gordon has eight for Texas A&M. And... This has uh, been kind of what we thought. 24-20 is the score. 3.32 to go before halftime. Dave Neal, John Sunfold from uh, Bryan College Station, Reed Arena. Roughly 1,000 fans able to attend this one. Saw some of the cheerleaders, dance team on hand as well. But Texas A&M, this is their type of game. This is, this is what they want. This is what they got. And they're comfortable in this world. Yeah, they are. And they've got eight points off of Missouri turnovers, seven Missouri turnovers. That's their game. If they can continue, here's where Buzz will be not happy at halftime. They have given up four offensive rebounds, and that is not what he wants. He wants one possession, one shot for the opponent because they struggle scoring so much on the offensive end. They can't give up more opportunities. Now, if they can force turnovers, get steals, that's what they want. Conzo Martin will be on the other end saying we got to be more aggressive attacking the offensive rebounds, keep pounding it inside. Uh, they found no answer defensively for Tillman. As you mentioned, he's got eight points. He's perfect three or three from the field. He's got a couple free throws to go along with it. Marfo with the offensive rebound, giving his team another opportunity. There's Manuel Miller. He is battling hard and fouled on the way up. Emmanuel Miller in a game last year against Missouri had 13 rebounds, nine of those on the offensive end. And you see a little bit of why he averages 16 points a game just because he's so tenacious. So what a battle inside. And when Marfo gets the first one, he kicks it right out. And Chandler took the shot. And Miller kind of had a free run from around the free throw lane. Free throw line. Nobody blocked him out. So he got an opportunity to get his head of steam, and he kept it on the offensive glass. Turnover by Texas A&M. Seven turnovers apiece. The difference is A&M has put together eight points off those turnovers. Missouri has yet to capitalize on any of those turnovers. And there's number eight. They can't get the ball inbounded. Boy, with an experienced club, you just can't have that on the road. No, and you almost want to say unforced turnover, even though even though there was pressure down there, but you've got to be able to inbound the ball or call a timeout. Especially as a senior, you've got to have a clock inside your head, count to five. If you don't like what you see, call a timeout. You're in the first half. Anthony.
Anthony Jordan. Our lead official today alongside Will Howard and Don Daly. There's Don Daly. Here's J.J. Chandler. Marfo spins into a double team and can't get it to go. Kobe Brown with the rebound. You know, Marfo, when he steps through, he's not been able to elevate over the top of anybody. Kind of plays below the rim. Here's a guy that can elevate, Jackson. No good, but Miller keeps it alive. Boy, this looks more like a volleyball game than a basketball <laughs> game. Good hustle back, I will say. Hustle back by Tillman. He was the last guy getting down defensively, but he did come up with a loose ball. Vincent's three, no good, and it'll belong to Texas A&M. I was watching gymnastics, SEC gymnastics last night. Saw a lot of nine nines, nine eight fives. I don't think we're going to get any anything close <laughs> to a ten today with what we're doing. You know, if you're a fan of either team, you're thinking if our guys can go on about a 10-0 run, right? Can you just you, can you right. get that run going? But maybe these two teams are too good defensively. It's so tough to score, but you got to make these open shots. Hey, and David, at, turnover. at the opening uh, on the open. We talked about, I said Pinson has been to the free throw line nine times, over nine times a game in SEC play, and that's where he makes his living. Zero free throw attempts uh, in this first half, and that's what Buzz talked about to his team on the, on the scouting report. Can't allow Pinson to get fouled going to the rim. I mean, neither team has shot free throws. Really, Missouri's two out of two, and Texas A&M 0 for 1. A wide open three, but Savion flag there gets it right back to Quentin Jackson. That won't go. Marfo had his hands on it for a moment. Now here is Drew Smith the other way. I'll say this: Jackson might have been a wild shot that last one, but I think he's better at that than taking threes. Threes has never been his game. Uh, and then Missouri answers with the three in the corner. So you've got to be able to play your game and attack it your way. The Tigers now only down one, 120 left. Largest lead for the Aggies has been seven. Oh my goodness. Hassan Diara, I think, surprised that he had an open lane to the basket and left it short from about five feet. Devon Pickett, nice drive off the window. Pickett's been good off the bench, has now given Mizzou a lead before half. Aggies will take a timeout. It's an 8-0 run over the last three minutes for Missouri to take this one-point lead. Don't forget, Thursday we'll have a women's basketball doubleheader for you. 10-1 Georgia squares off against Dawn Staley in number five South Carolina. That begins at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central time. Then it's number 12 Kentucky taking on an Auburn team looking for the upset in their first conference win of 20. 21. Both games right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, you can always find it on the ESPN app. Well, nice little run. You mentioned it a moment ago. Can one of these teams put together that 8-10-0 run? And that is exactly what Missouri has done to take this lead with 47 seconds to go before intermission. Well, good stops defensively. And, and they've not allowed AM to make shots, or AM hasn't made the open ones that they've taken. And they've been able to push it down the floor. Pickett hit the three, and then he got one going to the bucket. So, again, Conzo Martin has played a lot of players, keeping them fresh because it's one of those bog down games where you're just kind of grinding on both ends. He's kept enough fresh bodies to get on a little bit of run for the end of this half. Andre Gord stepped back at the free throw line. Needed to step forward, not back. That might have gone in. Here's Kobe Brown. saying them has just made three of their last 15 shot attempts as Kobe Brown gets that one to go down and for Brown his first basket and it's a three-point lead and A&M can hold for a final shot Stop! 
Miller. Here's Chandler. Five seconds. Good ball fake. Throws it up. No good. Rebound to the Tigers and Torrance Watson. So that'll do it. Good finish for Missouri. They finished that first half on a 12-2 run, and they lead it by three on the road. The 17th-ranked team in America trying to gain a little momentum after 11 days off because of some COVID issues. That'll do it for the first 20 minutes. Time for us to get it to our studios. Alyssa, Pat, Damian, take it away, gang. Thank you, guys, as we welcome you into the SEC Halftime Report. Alyssa Lang, Damian Fishback, and Pat Bradley here with you guys. Plenty to talk about when it comes to this uh, slugfest, if you there will. you go, Thirdly, defensively between Missouri and Texas A&M. PB, I want to kick it out to you first. Uh, Jeremiah Tillman right now mm. leading his Missouri Tigers with eight so far. What have you liked from him? Well, I like the big fella being aggressive. One thing we've come to know about Jeremiah Tillman is he's got the skill set. He's got great hands, great feet. It's about being on the floor, availability, staying out of foul trouble. They've done a good job defending without fouling. You see Jeremiah Tillman, you see all the attention he attracts, and there's the footwork I talked about, splitting that double team. That right there was him sprinting up the floor. He made himself big. He is still physical, but he can finish. He's strong, and he's doing a fantastic job getting himself in position, sprinting up the floor, getting good post position. Fish, something about this game that you were zoned in on was turnover, specifically points off of turnover so sure. far. Uh, we're sitting here with Texas A&M with eight points off of turnovers, Missouri with none so far. What have you seen when it comes to that side of the, of the ball? Well, when you have two tremendous defensive teams, and that's what you have, just like they were talking about in the Wisconsin Rutgers game last night, two quality <laughs> defensive teams here, then turnovers are paramount. And for Texas A&M, they throw so many different defenses at you. Look how they harass the basketball like a group of hyenas. They just go to it like a piece of meat. And then even in the transition, they never give up on the play. An outstanding job by the Aggies of tremendous, tremendously continuing to go after the basketball. And they do it as a team. They do it as a unit. That's what kept them in the basketball game in spite of not being able to score, except with points off a of turnover. What a compliment. A group of hyenas going after a piece of meat. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, we're going to have a big game going down very soon on ESPN between Kentucky and Auburn. And the name to keep an eye on in this one will be Auburn's Sharif Cooper. He has been balling out lately, guys. After missing the first 11 games, Sharif Cooper had 54 points and 21 assists in his first two games. He's the only SEC player in the last 25 seasons with 50 points and 20 assists in a two-game span. These are video game numbers, guys. SEC basketball from Bryan College Station, Reed Arena, where the homestanding Aggies trailing by three to 17th ranked Missouri. Their first game in 11 days. Dave Neal back alongside John Sunfold and Sunny. Texas A&M got the game they wanted at least for the first 18 minutes of this game, maybe 17 minutes of this game. They had a seven point lead, but over the last five and a half minutes, they only produced two points. This is kind of what we expected though, kind of a low scoring slugfest, and that's pretty much how it played out. Yeah, yeah, we expected this. Uh, if you're if you're A and M, you must make some baskets at some time. If not, an, an opponent like Mizzou is going to push it and finally get some buckets. In the end of that half, they went on a 10-0 run. Uh, they dominated. I thought inside in the paint area, and, and when you do that, uh, you put a guy like Tillman inside who had a perfect first half. He had eight points on three of three shooting and two of two for the free throw line. If you can't score on one end, it puts too much pressure on the other. And when Tillman caught the basketball, I thought he was patient. Uh, he didn't force anything. Uh, he was not in foul trouble, which in the past few years that's hurt him. He ran rim to rim. He, he allowed his teammates to find him in the opening and to get some easy buckets. That put a lot of pressure on this A&M on the back squad. Well, here's a look at some of the numbers uh, from the first half. And Missouri, a three-point shooting, three out of nine. Texas A&M, four out of 12. A&M only averages six three-pointers made per game. So already up to four. Matter of fact, Andre Gordon hit one about five seconds into the game to start things off. Not a whole lot of offense since then. Dave, I thought you made a good point uh, in the first half. Neither team getting to the foul line. Uh, Missouri 2 of 2 and A&M 0 of 1 from the free throw line. So which of these teams uh, can maybe put more pressure on the, on the defensive squad, uh, get some contact, get to the foul line, get some free points? Nice move there. There goes Drew Smith slicing through the lane and lays it up and in. 
Now a 14-2 run for Missouri. PR trying to find a little bit of room. Emmanuel Miller, the team's leading scorer with 16 a game, just four in the first half. Here's Tillman. Trying to back up a coup, they'll spin it around the perimeter. Boy, Mark Smith just having a heck of a time trying to find his shot. And that, and that right there is his shot, stationary shot. They swung the ball to him, he's gotta be ready to shoot it. And offensively, A&M, uh, when Diara got it inside, instead of making a pass from four feet, just take it up. It's better to get it on the rim than to pass it to a teammate who's two feet away from it. Diara, the freshman out of Queens, New York, went to Putnam Science Academy in Connecticut, won a couple of prep school national championships. Four-star. Top 75 recruit, but having a tough time today offensively. Just one of six and two points. Boy, nice drive by Pinson. That's, and that's his game. Hesitation up top. There was a screen up top, and they had to switch it. So flag was guarding him, and that's no matchup. Uh, Pinson knows he can take him off the dribble. Finished it right at the rim. Gordon almost threw it away. Instead, gets fouled on the way up, and he'll looks like he'll head to the free throw line. Here's where Xavier Pinson excels. Uh, if he can get a mismatch up front, his hesitation dribble, and then explosion, he's got the ability to finish right hand or left hand, but he's got too much quickness for most people outside to contain him. And Missouri now on a run, and this is trouble area for the Aggies. They've got to find a way to... A, get to the free throw line like Gordon's going to do. You've got to knock him in if you hit. And B, to find better shots against his tough Missouri defense. Don't forget, we've got some great basketball coming your way. Highlighted by this one as Vanderbilt looks for the upset against 10th-ranked Tennessee. The Vols 9-1, currently listed as a number two seed. Victor Bailey, Jr., John Fulkerson. Santiago Vescovi, they've, they've just got, uh, you know, that's one thing about Rick Barnes' team. He's got 10, 11 guys that at any night can, can, can hurt you. Mark Smith. Well, they've told him, obviously, to shoot it. Uh, he missed that first one. Now he gets one in the corner, misses, and one on the wing. Those look like better shots and shot attempts. Mark Smith defending J.J. Chandler. J.J. trying to find a little bit of room, and he steps on the baseline. It'll give it right back to Missouri. You know, you mentioned Drew Smith, or excuse me, Mark Smith a minute ago. I, I don't know if it's a psychological thing, Sonny. Maybe you can elaborate on this. But the first four games, average 17 points a game, right? 13 to 26 from behind the arc. Last five games, averaging seven points a game, and four of 18 from behind the arc. You know he can do it, right? I mean, is it a head game thing with him? Are teams defending him differently? What is the story? Well, rarely will teams now let him get shots off in the open, although we've just seen him miss three in a row. He was player of the week early in December when he played so well against Oregon, against Wichita State. Sometimes, obviously, there's a mental part of it. As a shooter, you've got to erase uh, bad thoughts. You've got to go back to what you do well. Uh, I'm sure he shoots a lot in practice. I'm sure he... You know, takes a lot of shots, makes a lot of shots, and he is a good open shooter. But when you start missing, it gets creeps in your head um, slowly. But by a senior year, you, you've got to be able to shake it loose no matter what part of the game or how you're struggling. Well, he keeps firing him up today, so maybe one of these will drop and see if he can get him going. Texas A&M looking for something to get them going. Missouri's lead is five. Timeout on the floor back in a moment. Thirty-one twenty-six, Missouri on the road up over Texas A&M inside Reed Arena. Monday, SEC Inside gives you an all-access pass to the national championship game between Alabama and Ohio State. Never-before-seen footage and sounds 
coming your way from Alabama's big win over the Buckeyes. It all starts at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. What a team, what a season, just an incredible run. Just an incredible run for Alabama. I, I, I don't know that I've seen anything like it or will see anything like it when you think about the competition that they had to run through. SEC schedule. And then you go to the playoffs and just, uh, you know, the margin of victory. I mean, it, it, it wasn't, there really wasn't a game. You, you, you thought they were in trouble, which no. was fun to watch. Well, Missouri and Texas A&M separated by five points here. Tigers with the basketball. Pickett double teamed on that baseline. And it knocked out of his hands for a moment. And a loose ball on the floor, and the Aggies win that battle. So how do you get a bucket if you're a and &M? And I think this guy is a guy that can keep he keeps missing. Jackson, he's now 0-7 from the field. Uh, Quentin Jackson a year ago in the A&M win uh, when Missouri visited Bryan College Station. J.J. Chandler. There you go, J.J. Eight points now for J.J. on a couple of threes. What a nice pass by Tillman. How did he even see him? And Pickett got it to go down. What a pass from your big man. Pickett has been good off the bench, but Tillman, again, there's a he, he plays differently than he did a year ago. Nothing is rushed. It's all very patient when he catches. He's being double teamed. And no rush to just fire the ball to the other side. He took a look. He had one teammate cutting. I think it was Mitchell Smith that cut across the lane. It was. And so Pickett's the far. And when he put it over there, Walker was late getting there defensively, drew the contact. Pickett, again, off the bench, pretty valuable today. Seven points so far in his 16 minutes. You mentioned coming off the bench. He started 62 games in his Missouri career and converts the three-point play, an 83% foul shooter. And it's back to a five-point contest. Missouri's had some really good wins this year. They beat Oregon, ranked in the top 25. They beat sixth-ranked Illinois. They've had a couple of true road wins. Wichita State's a heck of a ball club. They went on the road. They go at Arkansas and dismantle the Hogs. Ranked 17th, but coming off a loss and some COVID issues, trying to pick up a win on the road. Back in a moment. Not where he stands. In moments of comfort, inconvenience, but where he stands. The times of challenge and controversy. His words unite us. The game drives us. United we go on. Back inside Reed Arena here in Bryan College Station, where Texas A&M trailed by 14 in the second half. With about 17 minutes to go in their last game against Mississippi State. Came back to win at 56-54, trailing here by five with just about 16 minutes to play. And Conzo Martin and Buzz Williams matching wits. And for Conzo, this has been one of those strange couple of weeks. Obviously, they, they lose on the road at Texas A&M 11 days ago. They get home, and all of a sudden, they get some COVID issues, and they have to shut it down. But they didn't shut it down completely. Sonny, you talked about this earlier in the fact that they were still able – to get one-on-one -on -one work accomplished over the last 10 days, right? They've had one group, really hardcore team practice. But give me what that means in terms of developing players to have that time one-on-one -on -one with guys at this point in the season. Well, first of all, it keeps your conditioning up, right? You can get shots in, you can run, you can do sprints, you get your weight workout in. You've got to have space uh, to do all that, those kind of things because of the COVID rules. But it's not as though you shut everything down and no one can show up to the gym. So you can't do group things, but you can do individual work. And if you get that in, then guys are fresh. They came back Wednesday and had a good practice, Conzo said. Then they practiced yesterday, and then or uh, Thursday, then flew down on Friday. So it's uh, – I, I thought – 
Alfonso was pretty comfortable when we talked to him yesterday of where his team was, right? They, they, they looked at the film of Mississippi State. Uh, what I admire about what Council Martin does is he seems to move on from things. He doesn't sit yes. there and just, just, just worry about what they didn't do right. He talked about it. They went through it. He's got a veteran ball club. Not easy. every team's going to be easy to play. It's going to be a grind out because you're in conference season. And right now they're grinding, and they've got an advantage, which, again, let's go back. In this kind of game, five points is a bunch uh, when you're playing A&M. Now, A&M made a good comeback against Mississippi State. Let's see if they can do the same this afternoon, but they've got to make shots, and the guy that made them at Mississippi State was J.J. Chandler. They poked away there. Nice job by Bugs. Drew Smith with a stutter step, ball fake. Pickett had a wide open three. Now they'll give it to Bugs. Tapped around, and there's Tillman offensive rebound. Had great position underneath. Really dominating inside. The numbers aren't huge, but he's dominating. They can't get a body on him. They can't keep a body off him. Chandler off the back of the rim. Bugs. Pick it. Dave, you get a feeling Missouri's been much more patient at taking shots. Now they knock into three by Kobe Brown, but they've been much more patient at not just taking the first shot available against a team like AM, especially the last three minutes of the first half and the first six of this half. 10-point lead, the largest of the game for the Tigers, and it's clicking here in the second half for Conzo Martin's team. Well, it proves you're a good team if you can play at different paces and different styles, and like I said, they have kind of passed up some open looks to try to get a better look, and Kobe Brown, who's capable of knocking into three, has not shot a good percentage this season at 22%, and maybe has not had that uh, breakout sophomore season like many thought he would. But again, a guy that's capable, only averaging six points and five rebounds a game. He's had a couple games in double figures. But another capable offensive threat for this Missouri Tiger team. A&M had to rally. They were down in the second half. Down 13 in that second half. At about the 17-minute mark. They had 26 points in the first 24 minutes against Mississippi State. In the last 16 minutes, put together 29 points. They're going to need something special, something similar here today if they want to come back and upset the 17th ranked team in the country. Maybe on flag, pushed on the way up, he'll head to the free throw line. So Tillman picks up his first foul. And talking to Conzo Martin about Tillman and, and you know, kind of his emotional state as a player. Games where he goes in there and picks up an early foul, it kind of really disrupts him and his mojo during the course of a game. And obviously that's his first foul today, and he's having a heck of a game. But he's one of those guys, if he can get through the first five minutes, right, without that cheap foul or two, different ball game for him. And I thought it was interesting what Conzo said also. He, he, Jeremiah's not a kid that demands the ball on the block every possession. But if he can get a pick and roll in the dunk, then they might find him for a possession or two and then kind of not – you know, go away from him. He's not demanding the basketball every time. And even though the coaches would like him to do that, that's just not been his personality. And if he fits into a flow of a game and gets a couple buckets here and then does some defensive stuff, and then again, another couple buckets, that's where he is comfortable, and that's where he's helped his ball club. Collision on that sideline as Gordon went flying over the top of Kobe Brown. First on Gord. Kobe Brown's one of those guys. Just a great body, 6'7", 240, the sophomore out of Huntsville, Alabama. Exceptional high school player. Dad was his high school coach. Has a younger brother, Caleb, who is a Missouri signee in the class of 2021. Oh, nice play, and the reverse layup by Pickett. What coaches call the special teams, some of them are out of bounds, underneath out of bounds. And offensively, a great call. Defensively, you can't get caught where a guy lays it in against your half-court defense underneath out of bounds. Gord 
Catch and shoot, knocks it home. And Gordon with his third three. How about he's three out of three from behind the arc? So where do the points come from for A&M? Since they struggle scoring, where do they come from? Maybe it's a pace of play. They just put on a half-court trap. Drew Smith with kind of a quick shot, but Tigers get the possession back. Drew Bugs running the point. Hawaii's all-time assist leader with 437 dimes in his career before transferring to Missouri. There is Pickett, who in the second half is putting on a show. Yeah, he's a difference maker. Again, off the bounce, uh, because he can just be aggressive and attack, he's getting right to the rim point blank. Taking over team honors with a dozen points, five out of seven from the field for Javon Pickett. Capable offensive player. Maybe not night in, night out, but he is a guy that can score double figures. Will make a outside shot now and then, but it's usually the going to the rim, whether it's on a break or in a half-court set. And when all eyes are on teammates because of the scouting report, Pickett can kind of pick and choose and get in between. He had 14 points in that Illinois victory, although every year he's an Illinois kid. He plays great against the Illini. You know, a number to keep an eye on if you're a Missouri fan is when Pickett hits double figures, that usually means success as the Tigers are 10-1 and one over the last two years. When Pickett hits double figures, he sits at 12 this afternoon. Turnover will give it to the Aggies. Turnovers have not been an issue here in the second half as much as they were in the first half for Missouri. Conzo Martin, I don't know, you know, he says, he goes, you know, some teams you just kind of live with them a little bit, you know, that's just the style of, of <laughs> play. I still think it's he's turning inside every time he goes out of bounds. Well, you live with it because they're a veteran team, but you don't understand it because they're a veteran team. Now, second half, they only have two turnovers. Diara upset with one of his teammates. It's like Hayden yeah, Hefner, and, the freshman. You know, that's one where he, he thinks the guy should have been in a certain spot, but the guy wasn't in a certain spot, and you still threw it there. So, you know, freshman mistakes, turnovers, no shot attempts. Tough to come back if you don't get shot attempts. The follow by Tillman off the miss from Watson. The exclamation point on Jeremiah Tillman's afternoon. He's now up to a dozen with seven. Make that eight rebounds. Yeah, he'll be close, and he's closing in on a double-double. Another double-double. Eleven-point game. Boy, just a costly turnover again by the Aggies. Nice bounce pass. There's Mitchell Smith. Hammered as he throws it down. Boy, Missouri off and running now, Sonny. Tigers uh, powerful the second half. Defensively, offensively, Mitchell Smith with a dunk. Tigers up 11. Let's take a look at today's protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. Jeremiah Tillman front and center in this one. Domination uh, all game long. Inside, he has been powerful offensively, but defensively, blocking shots, rebounding, putbacks offensively. He has been the guy that uh, on a stat sheet in a scouting report, uh, opponents say, okay, we've got to limit what he's doing. Well, tonight or this afternoon, 12 points, eight rebounds. Uh, pretty much has controlled whatever he wanted to do inside, five or six from the field. A couple turnovers, a couple assists, a couple block shots. Jeremiah last year fought through some some injuries early on and you know I think there were times mentally he wasn't even though the doctor said he could play was ready to go I just don't think mentally he felt healthy that his body would hold up but he is healthy right now and has led Missouri to this 13 point advantage with 11 20 to go in this game and 
you get this, a glimpse of why this team has been able to have some big wins, why they are ranked 17th in the country. They're 26th in the net, the NCAA standard for which they measure college basketball teams at 7-2 and two, and trying to even their conference mark at 2-2 two and two if they can hold on here with 11-20 to go. They have four quad one net wins, and when you think of that, you go, wow, there aren't many teams that are doing that. Gonzaga's done it, Kansas, Oklahoma State, uh, and Missouri, and Houston. So there's five teams with four quad one net wins. So what they built with a schedule, uh, with a veteran team coming back, we already mentioned that 88% of their scoring coming back. A team that Conzo Martin thought last year probably could have competed close to an SEC championship. A few injuries here and there and a couple losses uh, derailed that move. But same guys coming back, a veteran squad. Um, he seems comfortable. We, again, we talked about it yesterday and played in 11 days. He had COVID issues, issues. Some coaches harp on it. He said, hey, we're good. Uh, you know, a little bit of a break for our guys. They all got good work in. They're all still in shape. So when you have that and confidence from your coaching staff, that, that translates down to players, and they seem very comfortable going on the road. We talked about the big win at Arkansas. Um, they had a neutral site win against Oregon. And so it's pretty confident that, that this team, that's why they're ranked 17th and in the top 20 the last five weeks. By the way, Sonny, that Kevin Marfo was assessed a flagrant on that foul, pushing Mitchell Smith in the back on that dunk, and that's thus the two free throws, so a four-point play for Mitchell Smith, and the Tigers get the basketball back, so if he could knock down a three here, it'd be a seven-point possession for Mitchell Smith. I yeah, try I don't to set like him up. Well, I don't like to call. I thought Marfa was actually trying to catch him as he was trying to make a play on the ball, but the officials have to call it the way they see it. Still think it'd be cool to see a seven-point play possession by one player. Remember Reggie Miller single-handedly <laughs> did that one time in the NBA game. Remember that in the playoffs? Yeah, they, he kept intercepting and shooting threes. <laughs> yeah. Right in front, hey, right in front of Spike Lee, I believe. That's right. Here's Emmanuel Miller. He turns and fires, and they need to get him going, and they need to get him going now. Just six points for the guy averaging 16 a game. That's just his fourth field goal attempt. And I think surprisingly, he hasn't been to the free throw line. Yeah, quiet afternoon for Miller. Um, and again, I think AM gets uh, bogged down offensively. And I know what the coaches try to do. I, I get it. Uh, I get it that, that they've got to shorten the game and shorten possessions, but you can't now because you're down 16. You've got to find defensive stops against a team that's. Missouri playing quite well in the second half. So now some of your scores, whether it's Miller, whether it's Flag, whether it's Chandler, whether it's Quentin Jackson, uh, they've got to do it offensively somehow uh, because, because they have a scoreboard up there and you're trying to win the game. You're not just trying to make plays. Emmanuel Miller, by the way, is top five in the SEC in free throws attempted and free throws made, 56 of 71 in 11 games this year, but has yet to attempt a foul shot today. He, he's four He's four games going over 20 points. And he's just been so quiet this afternoon. J.J. Chandler tapped around. Loose ball on the floor. It'll belong to the Aggies. Good hustle on the floor from Luke McGee, the freshman, or excuse me, the junior out of San Antonio. 6-11, keeps the possession alive and gets some high five on the way back to the bench. JJ, going baseline, spins into a double team. Jackson lays it off for Savion Flag for the dunk. So you had two guys there that are pretty good off the ball with the dribble, Chandler and Jackson, and they need some more of that because it's more of an attacking way to play. At the elbow, Mitchell Smith can't get it to go. Foul against the Tigers. I know it's been a quiet afternoon for Quentin. Jackson has not scored, but if he takes it off the dribble, he can be effective. 
Drop off, easy bucket for flag. We'll see if that gets the Aggies going a little bit. They've got to get defensive stops. They just got a miss shot by Mitchell Smith. One and done. Rebound, go the other way. Reset the clock. That foul, by the way, on Pickett. That'll be his second. That is just the fourth team foul of the second half against Missouri. A&M, seven team fouls, so free throws for Missouri the rest of the day. Missouri led by three at halftime, 27-24. They have outscored Texas A&M by 11 here in the second half. Here's Gordon. Quentin Jackson. Jackson scoreless, 0 for 7 from the floor, averaging over 11 a game. Three on the shot clock, Miller had it stripped. One, gets the shot off, and they're going to say shot clock violation. Good defensive stand by the Tigers. Yeah, terrific, and active hands by Drew Smith. Every time the dribbler was around Drew Smith, he got his hand on it to poke it away. And all that does is let that shot clock keep winding down. Aggies didn't even get a shot attempt. Kobe Brown. Here's Pickett. Off to Pinson. Shot clock at five. Pinson launches. Back-to-back -back shot clock violations. Yeah, good defense there by J.J. Chandler. Pinson got stuck on the dribble. And if you do, there's nowhere to go when you got a quick defender in front of you. Four shot. And Missouri, I, I, I like early offense of the set. They were moving the basketball side to side, trying to get some more motion, trying to get this Aggie team stretched out a bit. Still have to take shots when they become available, even at eight minutes left. Court. Because, Dave, if you don't, the home team can get a little bit of a run going, a little bit of an energy in the building. See what the Aggies do here. Down a dozen. A little seam in that defense, and Gordon got the friendly roll. Back to back baskets for Andre Gordon. They have cut this down to 10. The largest lead was 18 just a moment ago. Well, Andre Gordon has been the guy off the dribble. 17 points the second half. Can he bring his Aggies back? We'll see. Studio update, Kentucky taking on Auburn. How about Sharif Cooper finding Devin Cambridge for the alley-oop? We got to see that one again. That would help Auburn get a little bit of juice right now. Kentucky leads 8, 11 to 8. Uh, a pretty ugly game, though, shooting-wise. 8 for 38 combined between these two teams. 11 turnovers so far, guys. David Sunny, back to you. Thanks, Alyssa. Two important additions uh, in the league. Sharif, obviously, one of those. Katie Johnson at Georgia, another one. Two guys that uh, can certainly put the ball in the basket. Uh, interesting to see how teams end up playing them, right? Because there wasn't a whole lot of tape on what they can do. But now with Cooper, you've got a few games, right, to kind of figure out what makes him uncomfortable. So it'll be interesting to see if those guys continue to score at the rate they have been in their first few games on the floor for their respective teams. Well, Cooper's been phenomenal. He's, he's, he's already my player of the year, but we've got a long way to go, let's be honest. <laughs> We got a long way to go. <laughs> he's only so played far, a couple of games, Sonny. He's already <laughs> your player of the year. <laughs> you know, just two, but I know, you know, when you're in uh, Bruce Pearl's system, uh, the point guard gets to handle the basketball and do right. those things with it. So I think he'll be spectacular. Okay. All right. There's Kobe Brown. Nice, strong move. Kobe to the basket. Kobe now with seven points. That was a much needed bucket for this Tiger team. Give up a, a few buckets, give up a few points. The lead narrows down to around that 10 margin. You don't want to get it under 10 if you're Missouri. A&M had a little more rhythm. Now they bogged down a little bit against a good defensive team. J.J. Chandler at the shot clock horn sound.
through Smith. Right to Kobe Brown, fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line. Another big bucket by Brown. Again, in the half court defense, you've got to be able to stop the ball from getting in the lane. And Drew Smith took it off the bounce. Ends up in Kobe Brown's hand. Another finish, two in a row. Keeps the lead comfortable. Second foul on J.J. Chandler as he slapped Brown across the wrist. Kobe looking for point number 10 here at the free throw line. Kobe 60% at the free throw line this year. Clanks it off the back of the rim. Dillman closes off the baseline. Here's Drew Smith. Lays it up and in. Active hands defensively. Bad pass from Diara. Leads to an easy bucket. Missouri stretches the lead out again, but uh, Andre Gordon having a terrific game for the Aggies. Gordon now with 19 points. This high this year was 18 against UT Rio Grande Valley. And Surpasses that here today. That shot was blocked. The Aggies want a goaltend. And how about the Buzz hustle? How about the hustle from Tillman? That was a steal out top, a break to the other end, and Tillman runs, chases it down. And look how the timing. A long way from the rim. I think pretty good block. Good hustle by the big. 5.27 to go in this one. Lead is 12. Was as large as 18 here in the second half. Aggies cut it to 10 a couple of times. Crossover. And then a hard foul on J.J. Chandler. Kobe Brown throws him to the deck, and he'll head to the free throw line. And how good is Chandler off the dribble? Senior, had a great sophomore season, about eight points a game, but he's he's shifty, 91% uh, free throw shooter. Left-handed, can go either direction, but his hesitation dribble gets guys on their heels, and then he can explode. Hey, tonight the SEC Now team wraps up a full day of hoops with all the highlights, breakdowns, and interviews with players and coaches. 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. It's right after South Carolina LSU here on this very network and, of course, on the ESPN app. Now, Sonny, i got to go back to something you said. Sharif Cooper already two games in, your player of the year in the league. What about Cam Thomas at LSU, another freshman? He's played a bunch of games. Yeah, he's got dudes around him, though. Cam's got all these dudes around him. He's been fine. I mean, see, no one stands out yet for me. So I had to go with a guy. It's early. He's only played two games. But what about Lawson at South Carolina? He's had one game at 30. So, you know what? Right. We've got a long way to go. I'm, I'm just saying that. But yeah. you're going with, you're, right now, you're going with Cooper's your guy. Until he loses it, he's your guy. <laughs> Correct. The average is about 25 a game and 10 assists a game. And I think he's kind of unstoppable. Now, it sounds like there's a tractor pull going on in the Auburn game. That's a low-scoring game. And we'll see that. I'll see that one later. <laughs> it's 11 to 8 with six minutes to go in Kentucky Auburn game. 11 Gosh, to 8. You would think that would be an up and down, high scoring. Yeah. No, I think of, you know, you bring up Cam Thomas, who's been terrific. So, so let's think of LSU, high scoring team. Cam Thomas, Trenton Watford, Javante Smart. Uh, they get most of the hype, most of the puck. But to me, the X factor, Darius Days is about 14 points, nine rebounds, a couple steals a game, shooting 40% from threes. I mean, they, they have so many weapons, and he's the guy that's not really getting the attention. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a standout one guy from anywhere in this league yet. Um, but I look at that LSU team, LSU team and go, wow, they've got a lot of offensive weapons. Nice little floater by Drew Smith. You know, yeah, tough shot. 
to kind of summarize where the league is right now, Alabama clearly sitting out up front, right, and, and expectations are that they're good enough to hold on to this. They haven't won an SEC regular season crown since 2002, so it's been a while. But I, I, I would venture to say with LSU and their experience, and even Will Wade said this is the most fun he's had coaching a basketball team that he's had since as he's been a head coach. Uh, because they've got so many things. I think this is going to be a very interesting race to the finish line. I would just assume Alabama is going to be the team, even though they're out front right now. Yeah, there's a long way to go. I, we look at this Missouri team that defends like they defend, and eventually, at some point, the shooters that shoot it well for Missouri, if they start shooting it better, uh, they're a team that will be right up there. Um, don't sleep yet on the Florida team. Uh, I don't know if Keontae Johnson will come back to play. Nobody has said he will or won't. Scotty Lewis will be back. Uh, this is a wide-open league. Can LSU defend well enough? Well, they did when they played Ole Miss. They were spectacular. Uh, and, again, let, let's, let's not forget about Kentucky. They're just a team that wants to hang around. They're athletic enough. They defend well enough. They'll, they'll, I think it will be a race to the end. Uh, right now there's six teams projected in the NCAA. We'll see if that improves. Uh, if you get to that SEC tournament, it could be wide open and fun. Mark Smith finally gets off the schneid to knock home that three. He was 0 for 5 from behind the arc and had really been struggling. Was 4 for his last 23 before getting that one to go down. And a Here's very a good one. Yeah, very good rhythm jump shot. And Drew Smith with another steal. He is active, one of the best defenders in the league. But Mark Smith got it in rhythm. Moving to his left. Uh, wasn't standing still when he caught it. Has a movement, knocked it in. Tigers up by 15 on the road. Just 3.44 to go. Can they hold on? They're looking pretty good right now. Sixty-five fifty, Missouri out in front of Texas A&M. Dave Neal, John Sunbolt, three forty-four to go in this one. Missouri has been led today by a couple of guys. Drew Smith with fourteen. You get a dozen from Pickett, but really Tillman underneath with nine rebounds, twelve points in the first half, uh, kind of carried him on his shoulders. Yeah, he's been the force inside. He, he's been someone that AM has not been able to match up with, whether he's in the low post uh, offensively double teamed and splits it and scores, whether he's got offensive rebounds and putbacks, a few block shots. Uh, he's just been a hard matchup uh, for this AM squad. And when Jeremiah Tillman does this, which he has done this, these numbers, in conference play, this Tiger team is tough to beat. He, he was spectacular on the road at Arkansas. He was solid, and he played a great first half against Mississippi State. Uh, did not have a big second half. They didn't really go to him the second half against Mississippi State. But then this afternoon, a few early touches, uh, opens up that offense for this Missouri team. Our player of the game brought to you by our friends at Zaxby. Zaxby's. I think we'll get a little Zaxby's on the way home for a player of the game, right? That sounds pretty good. Savion flag, nice spin move, up and under, and he is fouled by Kobe Brown. And for Brown, that'll be number four there. Missouri foul number 24, Kobe Brown, that's his fourth. 18 fouls all against the Tigers. Savion flag, can't get that free throw to go. Savion. 76% career, 62% foul shooter. Savion Flagg trying to find some rhythm here as his career at Texas A&M. It's in its senior season. Of course, a couple of those years under the direction of Billy Kennedy. Actually, he was recruited by Virginia Tech staff when Buzz Williams was at Virginia Tech coming out of high school. So when they got here, this staff, they were quite familiar with Savion. And what he could do. 
You know, taking a look at the numbers, uh, A&M has 16 turnovers in this ball game, and, and Missouri has 14. But Missouri only has four turnovers in the second half. They've protected the basketball. They've shot a higher percentage in the second half. They're 57 for, percent from the field in the second half of, of the field goal, which is a high number against an A&M type defense. And a whistle will stop with 2.32 on the clock. Missouri today has, after a, what was a really slow start offensively shooting the basketball, they're up to 51% from the floor. And they're shooting 57% here in the second half. Even Aggies shooting the ball better in the second half at 50%, but they're shooting at 37% for the game. That's how bad it was in the first half for Texas A&M. I think the value for Conzo Martin and his coaching staff is there's trust uh, with the bench players for production. It doesn't have to be every game. Conzo uh, will play a number of players, but on certain afternoons or certain nights, uh, it doesn't have to be one guy. It can be different people, and that's what this bench brings. Uh, to this afternoon, it's been Pickett with 12 points, who really, he made a three and a driving bucket for a two in that first half that led to a 10-0 run that gave the Tigers a lead. Just certain minutes of certain stretches of a game, if you've got guys that can come with energy off the bench and produce something, especially in the offensive end, because we know there are a lot of good defensive teams in this league. But you've got to have someone be able to put points on the board and score it on the offensive end. Emmanuel Miller made that last shot, just nine points for Miller. Missouri's done a nice job taking him out of his normal game today. Miller does have seven rebounds right around his average, but averaging 16, over 16 a game, and Miller sits on nine. Only six shot attempts, and I think that uh, maybe the bigger number of this is just two free throws. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, his ability to get to the free throw line, but he has been very quiet. Good job by Missouri, the scouting report. And not only the scouting report from the coaches, but the players interpreting it and, and listening to it, reading it, and going through it and be ready for the game. A quiet game for Emmanuel Miller, who's not had many quiet games in his sophomore season. We already mentioned he's 10 point, points higher this season in average from 6 to 16. You know, Drew Smith is such a good on-ball defender. You don't get many angles on him as long as he doesn't reach and pick up fouls. He's got active hands, comes up with a lot of steals. But that play, that, that right there, Andre Gordon, who's had a good game, but that's just a solo move against a solo good defender. And you come up with a miss, and to a coaching staff like Missouri, uh, they're going to praise Drew Smith because it is. It's terrific defense. Mitchell Smith. Swinging around to Drew Smith. Now Bugs. Here's where you basically just kind of grind an offensive possession, right? Make a defense, keep moving, keep guarding cuts. Allow time to, to wear off even if you miss the shot. Let the time run down. Make A&M come down, see if they have to spend time getting the shot off. Boy, after 27 points in the first half. For Missouri, they've put up 41 here in the second half. And, that, and, and, and Dave, that's a lot of points in the style of game that A&M is almost forcing you to play, right? That, that is a ton of points with this kind of style. But they got to the free throw line more in the second half. They got nine, nine free throw attempts. They shot the ball better from the field. And they defend it. A&M is a team that doesn't score a lot. Offensive weapons aren't a bunch. Texas A&M sitting on 52 points. would be a season low for the Aggies. By the way, before we get out of here, I don't know if he's watching now, but we want to send our best to Frank Martin, South Carolina's head coach, for the second time zapped with COVID. Said this time around it's gotten him pretty good. He won't be with his team today, obviously. So all the best out to one of our favorites in any sport, Frank Martin, yep. 68. Here, 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 here. Hope he's doing well. Hope he's doing well. Score. And South Carolina back on the court. 
later today after they've battled through their COVID issues. And listen, Texas A&M, this is a team, this is how they're going to have to play, right? They don't have the offensive firepower. So this is what they're going to have to do. They just can't allow teams to score 68 points because Texas A&M doesn't really have that in them. Yeah, they've got to make it ugly. Um, and Missouri, they were ugly for a while, right? That first probably 17 minutes of the first half. But Missouri got going, pushed the ball a little bit, got avenues. Again, I thought Pickett opened up the game, opened up the offense when he got in the game because he was so aggressive with the ball. Dave, I was thinking coming into today, uh, the road teams were 15 and 14 in league play. Georgia won at Ole Miss 16 and 14. Missouri's going to win today 17 and 14 road teams over home teams in SEC play. Now, it's crazy. There's a big difference when there aren't fans in the stands, no emotion. Uh, an opponent, when you go on the road, there's nobody screaming at you, yelling, things like that, and, and the emotion that a home team can get energy when a crowd gets them going, when you get on a 4.6, 0.8, 10-point run. It's not there during this COVID time. And wouldn't you know it, turnover gives it back to Missouri with just 13 seconds left to go. That is turnover number 17 against Texas A&M, and Missouri will just run out the clock here, I would assume. They'll next up take on South Carolina. That'll be coming your way Tuesday on this network, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Meanwhile, for Texas A&M, they will be at Vanderbilt. But a good win for Missouri. They had to uh, rebound from some COVID issues. It was 11 days between games. But yet, they are 27-0 when they hold their opponents under 60 points under Conzo Martin. They do it again today. Yeah, solid win. Another road win. They've won four or five away from uh, the Zoo Arena. So this Tiger team is for real a top-20 team. They go to 8-2, 2-2 two, two and two in conference. Texas A&M now 7-5. and five. They are 2-4. and four. And with that, that'll be it for John Sunvold and the rest of our crew. I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Bryan College Station. Let's get you to the studio. Thank you, guys. Nice win for the Missouri Tigers, but it's on to the next one. About 36 minutes away from tip-off between Arkansas and Alabama, two teams who we know can score a nice win on the road. SEC teams are 17 and 14 in road games this year. What, what, what do you see as the difference? Is there anything different going on the road this year than in years past? Yeah, it's a lot different because it ain't it ain't as many fans, and you can't get all the momentum that you need off the off the crowd energy. So basically, it really don't feel like a home court advantage. So that helped both teams. Jeremiah, I want to hit you on your leadership again. You talked about this being a veteran team. I know you specifically take a lot of that leadership role. What do you say to these guys during the week, during games, to make sure you're doing what you need to do as far as winning games the rest of the season? Um, just making sure we all locked in. Um, making sure we're not playing around when it's time to focus. <laughs> we can play off the court, but on the court, it's time to just lock in. Like I said, we are an older team. We don't have too many games to be trying to learn from mistakes. We can't do that this year. We didn't did that in the previous years. So we're just trying to make sure we all hold each other accountable. Jeremiah, you talked about playing around, but you didn't play around today. You had a double-double, <laughs> man. So, so what have you done this season and even in the offseason to continue to improve upon your basketball game? Um, just making sure I'm taking care of my body, uh, being mentally strong, physically strong. My mental thing was the, the biggest thing for me this year because in the past years I've been worried about the wrong things on, on, on the court. And this year I've been focused on the right things, and it's just been helping me stay calm and just not worrying about if I'm getting pushed around and complaining to the, to the, uh, to the refs. I'm not really worrying about no fouls. I'm just out there to play and just going hard. Jeremiah, you you – Obviously, I've been a very unselfish player, but Coach Martin and your teammates, they always talk to you about getting big, right, demanding the ball. Yes, what, what mentality was that process for you or the thought process of going into games demanding the ball on the post like you did today? Um, I'm a big man. That's something I should – it should be second nature for me. And me, I just – I'm, I'd be too casual if they miss me, then I'll wait to say something later. But my coaches rather me get on them right then and there. And I was just too busy, like, being nonchalant and, like, they'll get it to me next time. But this year, I've stepped up and made sure that if they miss me or something like that, I'll holler at them. I'll talk to them right there and there. 
Jeremiah, like you said, a big game today, another double-double. So I have to know, what was the pregame routine for you today? How do we recreate this? What was in the headphones as you were getting ready for this one today? Honestly, the past couple of games, I ain't even been having a routine. I've just been doing the same thing. Uh, I'm just chilling. I'm not having too much energy before the game. I'm just relaxed before the game and just making sure I do everything the exact same way as far as coming out the locker room before pregame, all that stuff. Just I don't even listen to music no more before the game. I just be just chilling. A pro's pro. Just chilling. <laughs> just chilling and putting up double-doubles. Jeremiah Tillman, thanks so much for joining us. Congrats on the win. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but before I do anything like that, uh, I have to listen to some sort of music, but maybe I need to stop and embrace my inner Jeremiah Tillman. Uh, Jeremiah, huh? Pat Bradley, I know you were talking about Mr. Tillman at halftime. What impressed you the most about him today? Well, it was what he just said, how he's engaged now. And I, and I do appreciate when he says when his teammates miss him now, he, he addresses it right away. He says, hey, little fella, get me the ball when I run down. And you saw him sprinting to the block, getting big, and he's using that great footwork, and he's got great hands. Uh, he is the difference for this Missouri team, Fish, because they can throw it to him in the post, he can kick it out for a three, or he can finish, and he gets to the free throw line, puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Yeah, and from now on, Pat, if you talk too long, if I don't get a chance, I'm going to address it right <laughs> away and make sure I let you know. No, I, I, I love the fact that he's, he's really displaying and exemplifying what's made this Missouri team good. Uh, some both talked about it, the fact that they've got – Four plus quad one wins in a year where he mentioned some of those other teams, Kansas, Oklahoma State, Houston. So this is a team that still isn't getting the respect that they deserve. And one of the reasons why they've been able to continue to produce wins is because of that leadership that Coach Conzo Martin and the Missouri Tigers have had. Fish, just talking to Jeremiah, you can tell the expectations are so high. As you look at the rest of the year, where do you think the ceiling is for this Missouri team? Listen, I think Coach Conzo Martin wants to compete for championships like, like any team in the SEC expects, which is why you see such a competitive league. Now, the question is, can they get that done? Uh, I think they have the talent, they have the leadership, they have the experience and coaches to do that. Uh, but it's going to be competitive. You look at Alabama's start, you look at Tennessee's start, you always have Kentucky. Uh, it's going to be a long road, but I think that would be their ceiling is trying to get an SEC championship. You mentioned Alabama, a team that has had great success so far this season. They've got a big game coming up against Arkansas. Let's talk about this one because, Pat Bradley, there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. <laughs> what are you looking forward to between the Razorbacks and the Tide? Well, Fish will remember this. We, we used to talk about the road recipe an awful lot. So when you go on the road, what do you want to do? You want to take care of the ball. And Alabama is number one in the league in steals. So right there, the Hogs have got to make sure value the ball is a priority. The other thing, Alyssa, is high percentage shots. The Hogs lead the SEC in free throws attempted. So they've got to be committed to attacking the paint, high percentage shots, and on the other side, you get a defensive rebound because, as we all know, Alabama, they are going to shoot a high volume of jump shots, long shots, long rebounds. So, Fish, for me and my, my standpoint, it's going to be difficult to try to match Alabama bucket for bucket. So you got to, at times, slow the game down get to the free throw line. Yeah, Pat, you talk about that roll recipe as much as I talk about my five fingers, one <laughs> fist. I love it. No, I, I, and I think you're spot on. Uh, there, there are a couple of changes that I look for in this basketball game, in particularly the fact that Bruner's not in this basketball game. You look at Herbert Jones, Jaden Shackelford, John Petty, uh, and then Bruner really have about 56, 50 percent, 57 percent of their scoring. So with him out of the basketball game, is Alex Reese going to step up? Do you have a guy like Primo that gets more minutes? The question is, who's going to fill up that hole that Bruner had uh, in regards to a frontline player and a guy who could stretch the defense when they had five guys to step out and shoot the three? Herbert Jones, that man you see right there, will continue be the, to be the leader, but I'm anxious to see who else steps up. Fish, is there something to be said about just the level of confidence that both of these teams are playing with? I mean, I watch Alabama certainly coming off of a win against Kentucky on Tuesday. I know Kentucky is a little different in 2021, but it's still Kentucky. It's still the yeah. team to beat in the SEC, and these guys just did it pretty handily. 
What do you see from a confidence standpoint from these two teams? I think they have elite confidence in, in, in terms of the Crimson Tide right now. Alabama uh, is playing as well as anybody, not just in the SEC, but in the country. Now, they're doing that in spite of not having Quinterly in this basketball game or, or in previous basketball games. It's always been a next man up mentality. Uh, I'm anxious to see, though, because Bruner was a critical piece. He defends. He completes defensive possessions with rebounds. He's also got the versatility to step out and shoot threes. I think Alex Reese has to be a crucial guy in this basketball game. And then for Arkansas, they're still trying to find out what they can do in spite of not having Justin Smith. Vanover will be huge in this basketball game. How does he compete with the speed and pace of this game with him being seven foot three? I'm anxious to see that as well. I have to ask Shuda about defense. I mean, we've talked enough about scoring <laughs> so far. PB, what do you want to see defensively from these two teams? Well, I, it, it's no secret that if Alabama is able to get to the paint on the dribble, that's what they want to do, right? They want to, and Coach Oates makes, uh, uh, he lets you know that what we do is we attack the paint. We want to do one, two, or three attacks each possession, attack for a layup, or we're going to attack, kick for a three-point shot. So for Arkansas, if you cannot contain the ball and you allow them to get in the paint, that's it, it's over. And there's another injury, too, the Hogs have, uh, a guard, K.K. Robinson, who would have been very effective defensively, Fish, because if they cannot keep Alabama in front of them, uh, Shackleford, even Herb Jones, John Petty, these guys, John Petty, for instance, has come so far from his freshman right. year, now he's willing to put it on the floor for layups and, again, drive and kick threes. So for the Hogs, you've got to be able – to defend the dribble, or it's going to be a long night. And defend without fouling. Coach Eric Musselman mm -hmm. had two guys who were critical at that last year, and Isaiah Joe and Mason Jones. He knows the value of getting to the free throw line. You talked about that method, Pat, of Nate Oates, getting to the free throw line, getting layups, and getting three-pointers. If Arkansas can defend without fouling, get out in transition and knock down some three-point shots, they'll give themselves an opportunity. What, what I would add to, Alyssa, for the Hogs offensively, they played a great game against Tennessee at Tennessee. They followed their off 